Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the Back Fist Show. I've donned my dickies. I'm putting on my kind of engineery gloves, and that's because I'm going to be doing a change of brakes on a Fiat Punto, of all things. Just the front discs and pads. Haven't done it on this particular car, but I can't see any particular challenges. So I'll put the camera up outside and we'll have a look. Get your trolley jack in place, have a look. Often cars have markings just to let you know where you can jack from without damaging your sill. The aim here is not to get it totally off the ground because if you get the wheel totally off the ground when you try to undo the bolts it'll just spin around. So you can see I've just left it slightly on there. I'm using an old gas pipe as a breaker bar that gives me a bit more torque. You can see I need about a quarter of a turn to break the sort of seal and then after that I can just loosen them by hand. You don't really need anything fancy you can see just there. A bit of scaffold pipe might do you. See now, now the main torque on those bolts has been removed, I can just jack that up. You can see it's not really uh, spinning the wheel now, it's pretty much hand tight. This is the final position now, we'll get this wheel off in a moment. Incidentally, this wheel uh, hubcap is an interesting one because it's actually held on by the bolt, so that's kind of annoying, but I guess kind of good, so if you hit a curb it's not going to just fling off. Keep these somewhere safe when you take them off. And try not to get the threads too dirty. Once the wheel's off, make sure you uh, just shove it underneath the car unless you've got axle stands. That way if anything happens with your jack and the car falls at least it's not going to crush you and it'll leave enough gap that you can get the jack in afterwards. Something you should probably do before you actually start the job though is actually check that the parts you've ordered are the right parts. I've uh, took a gamble here and uh, I, it's paid off. They've been fine. Sometimes you'll get brake discs in a sort of waxy wrapping rather than a polythene poly bag. So just make sure if you've got done that you could give them a wash or a little scrub down with some emery paper. If they've got any grease on them you see just some washing up liquid and water. Give it a good dry. It'll be fine. I'm just offering these up now to the old one just to make sure they're about the right size. They look pretty good. I'd say that's spot on. In fact, the old ones aren't that bad. There are two locating lugs there. We'll just have to remove those to be able to take the disc off, so bear that in mind. When, you've, when you're sort of sorting out your tools, you're going to need a, a variety of sockets. Yep, those look about right as well. Interestingly enough, you saw there's some wires in the bag there. Those are for sensors. This car doesn't have them, but if you've got wear sensors on yours, make sure you get those wires. Just note where the old ones come off and just swap them out. These are pretty easy. They're not holding them with Loctite or anything like that. Just put them safe. Make sure when you put them back on, you don't over torque them. The disc is not seized, luckily. So in some cars you don't need to do this stage, but I'm just taking the caliper off. It's clearly never been off in the life of this vehicle, so as, it, as it's not too much effort to get them off, I'd rather get it off, have a look, clean it up, and then just assemble everything at ease. Normally they're only held in with two bolts. Yep, yeah, they look pretty good. see I'm waggling this around there's a bit of corrosion on there sometimes you might think you've got the wrong socket but actually there's a layer of rust that's bubbled up on the head of the bolt just get it on there just give it a good old waggle and if you need to just get a mallet and that'll bite it in 
but make sure it really is hit home before you start trying to turn it otherwise you could round off that bolt and you'll be in a whole load of pain after that. You can see it's not there's not you know it's not too stiff not too tight I can just sort of get that off with a little mallet but if you're having real trouble remember that big gas pipe I had earlier put that on the end and just torque that up or use a breaker bar Here we go, that's good too. There goes our pad, and there's the disc. Just a quick inspection of the disc, really. It is, it's got a bit of a lip on it. Re you probably could reuse this, but it's really not worth it. For this car, the whole set of pads and discs cost £25 for the whole lot, so it's a no brainer, really, just swap them in. I'm just going to jump straight in and get that disc on while I've got all the bits in my hand. And remember, you don't need to over torque these really, they're just for locating. As long as the disc's sitting flush and it's not wobbling around after, that's tight enough. Your wheel nuts are going to be holding, well, wheel bolts rather, are going to be holding on the whole thing, sandwiching that to the hub, so it's not going to go anywhere. Just cleaning out the detritus from here, just a lot of rusty crap. Always keep one of these, uh, you know, these elasticated straps handy, just to hold that up. You want to take the strain off the brake line if you can. Last thing you want is a leak on the brake line. We'll just take this uh, cap guide off so we can lubricate it, clean it up when we put it all back together. And you'll notice there's actually a, sl a pin there at the bottom, a tapered pin. If you're only doing the pads, you don't actually need to take the caliper off, you can just open it. While we're here, we're just taking the opportunity to get a G clamp to push the piston back in. So as the brakes wear, the piston pushes further and further out, so the pads go into the disc. Um, but fortunately, if you want to fit your new pads, that piston will be way too far out. So you'll need something like a G clamp just to push that back. Some people recommend you leave the brake res reservoir lid off, so any fluid getting pushed back up the system can go somewhere. Follow your mac manufacturer's recommendations on this, I'm saying, but this is the technique I usually l use. Some cars have electronic systems and you have to actually wind them back in electronically using the computer, so hopefully yours won't be one of those. Most simple cars will just be like this. So that's the old pad. Yeah, just, just a mil or two of wear left on that. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a difference. So that probably is why it wasn't braking particularly well. I'd say it was at the point where you could feel the engine braking more than the real actual braking. And you could see the line on the new pad, it's just actually at the wear limit. So I'm just taking out a little R-pin. There's a little clip there that holds that pin in the bottom. You can see it right there in the middle of the frame. Pop that out and then that'll let you be able to hit out that tapered bar you could use a drift or mallet hammer whatever you've got you don't need any sophisticated tools here this is brute force and ignorance just make sure you're trying to hit it out not hit it in any stronger you can see here though I've opted to putting the caliper back on at this point there's no need for it to be off I've inspected it it's clean get that back on and then I'll um, I'll show you what that pin the uh, pad retaining pin does If you've got some Loctite, often you can put a bit of Loctite on these, that sort of follows a manufacturer's recommendation. For me in this case I didn't really bother, it looked like there was a, there was a bit of old Loctite on there and I'm just going to talk that up. It 
So there's the pin I was telling you about, that's tapered pin. So I've taken the clip out so it can actually move freely. Just pop that out and then the whole caliper pad hole just slides open just like a door. Look, there you go. Pop your new pad straight in there. If you've got some copper grease, now's a good time to lubricate the uh, pad guides here, the pad slides so they can move in and out freely. Often it's Often you can like just omit these sorts of steps and mechanically it's going to be fine but you might end up with some sort of screeching or noise or something like that so if you've got the grease on you on hand just just put it on now. I always like to add a little bit of grease on the outside this is just the uh, faces really where they sort of mount up to the sort of piston and the retaining uh, bracket for no other reason really other than it might make it slightly easier to remove in the future but it depends. I've, I've seen it still with the copper grease on when I've changed them and other times I've seen the copper grease baked so <laughs> either way now when you go to shut it you might find like here it doesn't actually shut properly and that's because that piston has kind of worked its way back out slowly but surely it's sort of through all the manhandling it's kind of popped itself out a couple of mils so I'm just going to shove it back in that little bit there he goes you'll know when you've done it far enough because the little door is just going to shut slam bit more copper grease copper grease wherever you can anything that slides on another thing get some copper grease on there bit of brute force and ignorance might be required but just make sure it's aligned before you start hitting it with anything There's that little clip we had earlier. Just going to perch it straight in the hole and see with one blow if I can get that into the hammer without it firing off somewhere. Success. Yep, everything's still moving. So there's that last spring clip again, bit of copper grease. That's going to help us get that back in and help it those brake pad slide within it just make sure you keep everything clean and wiped off though in between operations you don't want really any grease at all on your brake uh, pads for obvious reasons just make sure that's nicely seated and then one whack in the right place and that panel pop back in there While I'm here though, just going to make sure those last two caliper bolts are uh, really torqued up nicely. Give it about an eighth of a turn. I think that's about right. And there's our old bits and bobs back in the bag, nice and clean. Get it out of the way. Try to keep clean up as you go along and make note of what tools you use because you're going to have to use them again on the other side. bounce it, get any residue, dust off that. Fortunately it lines up nicely, those two guide pins are actually really useful, often you only get one and you get the benefit of two on this. Don't do what I do here, I put this cub cap on and you can see it isn't aligned with the air valve so I had to take this off uh, after I filmed the video and turn it through 90 degrees or whatever is needed just to get that. There's the air valve hole right in the bottom of the frame there where the air valve itself is by my left hand. I was not too pleased to find that. But I'd only noticed when I was doing the other side that that was, it would be an issue. Funnily enough though, that's the first time I've ever seen that, but I think it's the first time I've ever seen bolt-on plastic hubcaps.
going to let it down a bit now and just do the final talk. What I like to do is get it um, about hand tight and then give it a quarter turn. That's my... I've, I've had that gas pipe for so long and done this size of wheel for so, so frequently. I, I, that is pretty much the right talk. <laughs> Consult your manufacturer's guidelines though. Don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> And that's it, all done. So all you need to do is just repeat that for as many wheels as you need to do. Please consider commenting down below and subscribing and sharing.